the story of God's zeal revealing how God's people should live in this world to Abraham with Isaac and Jacob with Joseph and now the story of the reappearance of God's zeal to a nation called Israel that begins with the 12 sons of Jacob will continue. The Eternal and Unchanging Word of God One Story one story 14 joseph 2 genesis chapter 42 to 50 god's vision the vision for god's people to be fulfilled through joseph is god's vision not joseph it is not joseph's dream that joseph plans prayers and prepares for but it is god's vision that god is fulfilling and will fulfill through joseph whom god has chosen and distinguished without joseph's consent so vision is different from dream the differences are as follows the first difference is who it came from. Vian will be completed by God and so it belongs to God and so the subject is God. It begins with God. But dreams are what we build, what we start based on our experience and ability. The second difference is for who. Vian is clearly what God gives to God's people for God's name and for God's people. But dreams are for myself. It is mine, including for my family, my business and my ministry and me. The ultimate purpose of it is different. Third, the content of trying best is different. Vian is not for for me, but for God and God's people. So even if I do my best, I do my best in God's way. However, when I am doing my best for my dreams, the ultimate purpose is for me, a sinner. So my best can be done in any worldly way possible. The fourth difference is if we can give up. The Vian cannot be given up because the perfect God who transcends the past, present and future has already achieved and progressed to the ultimate victory and gave it to God's people with a perfect ending. We cannot give up because the subject is God, not us. However, with dreams we are the start of it and the subject of it. So depending on the circumstances and conditions, we can constantly change and even give up on our dreams. Fifth, if we can know from the beginning is different. We cannot know or understand the VN because it originated and started from God. We may know after some time but we cannot know it from the beginning. That is why VN is the journey of faith. However, dreams begins with us and is a picture we have drawn so we can know its end. If we feel like it's not going to work, we can change it. Right now, Joseph receives God's vision, not his dream, and is being used as God's tool. The vision started with God and it will go on in God's name. This goes beyond what Joseph can or cannot do and will reveal his best, and he cannot give up in any circumstances. In the beginning and middle, Joseph didn't even know the meaning or the results of his dreams, the vision of God given to him. He walked every step of every day, every step of the way, and when he looked back in God's time, he realized the time that had passed. Joseph who became a slave Joseph was sold by his older brothers and Fortifar, the Egyptian captain of the gods, bought Joseph. Joseph's identity was obviously a slave, a slave from abroad, but his master, Fortifar, sees that God is with Joseph. Also, Joseph, in old despair, is not frustrated and does his best to fulfill his role. It is not that Joseph never had any frustration or urgency. When Joseph was sold by his brother, he begged desperately with a broken heart. However, God's presence supported him. God keeps the heart and mind of his people in peace even in the dark valley of death. He is bounding us securely in the bundle of the living. David confesses, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Apostle Paul also confesses, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 44. Joseph's master sees God with Joseph, sees that God is making him prosper and makes Joseph be in charge of his household. Then God blesses 44's house for Joseph. The reason why Joseph was sent to Egypt is gradually revealed. Through Joseph and because of Joseph, other people can see God and are blessed by God. Path to become a prisoner
Joseph now passed one stage, but he is not the subject here. Joseph's own goodness and righteousness did not overcome his slavery life in Egypt. We must see the God, the real subject, who is progressing this. Joseph must now go to prison. In prison, he has to be prepared for something again. One day, Potiphar's wife looks at Joseph, who has a good appearance and wants to sleep with him. At that time, the relationship defined between a master and slave was not human to human, but owner and the object. Even if Joseph managed the possession of the house as a person in charge of the household, his status is definitely a slave. It was natural for the male master to do anything with his female slave and for a female master to anything with her male slave. But Joseph refuses the hostess request. He refused her every day and did not even stay with her. There was only one reason to this. He could not do such a wicked thing and sin against God. So Joseph goes to prison. Every slave lived like that so Joseph could have buried it and follow through. But Joseph set the standard of his life to God. Joseph may have heard and learned this from Jacob who had a thorough experience of God. The one who is looking over all situations and allowed him reap the fruits of it. Fortifar's wife who eventually became unable to do what she wanted framed Joseph. Joseph deserves to die if what Fortifar's wife said was true. But Fortifar who knows his wife well sends him to the prison for the king's prisoners. Joseph cannot die yet. Joseph becomes a prisoner. Joseph was sent to prison, however the prison was not a prison for ordinary prisoners. There are two types of prisons, one that confine ordinary criminals such as murder, adultery and theft and prisoners of politicians or kings. Political prisoners or kings and their wages are kept in a pot even if they are placed in different or the same prisons. This was because they can incite other prisoners to endanger the country. So, the prison that Joseph should be sent to is the one that confines ordinary prisoners. But Fortifar sends Joseph to the one in his house, the prison that keeps the prisoners of the king. God had a reason for everything and sends him there for special training. And even there, God's presence was with him and brought grace to the God who oversees the prison. So Joseph was in prison but he was also taking care of other prisoners in prison. It was because he was a prisoner in front of man but not a prisoner in front of God. Then some time passes. The king's servants, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker came to the place of imprisonment of the king's prisoner for sinning against the king of Egypt. And after some time passed, both chiefs had dreams and Joseph interpreted their dreams to them. And like Joseph said, chief bearer was reinstated to his position and the chief baker faced death. Here Joseph makes a request to the chief bearer. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews and even here I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. In other words, Joseph meant please save me from this prison. Joseph doesn't know yet. He doesn't know why he had to be separated from his father because of his brothers and was sold in Egypt as a slave. Also, even though he kept his faith without committing sins before God and man, he does not know why he is a prisoner and was sent to prison. But we know right now Joseph is living the shadows of Jesus, who was persecuted with no sin and died on the cross, went down to grave and resurrected. And the Bible says that Joseph was forgotten by the chief cupbearer after he was reinstated. Joseph would have only waited for the day he was freed from the prison with the help of the chief who had been reinstated like the dream Joseph had interpreted. He must have shaved his beard, changed his clothes and waited every day. But it is not yet God's time for Joseph to come out of prison. The place where Joseph was in prison, the prison for the king's prisoners, was a place where the kings and towerages, those who knew the politics, economy, military and the law of Egypt were in prison. At one time, they were the ones who had power with the king. But in one day, they lost everything because of the king and, and came to prison waiting for death. In the times of absolute kingship, such things often happened. For those people, they would be grateful to Joseph who was a faithful foreigner with handsome looks and cared for them in prison day after day. So they held on to Joseph every day and told Joseph how great they were, what great things they did and what were the result for the things they did. They would have said all this in detail, half lamenting and half proudly. 
Joseph would have listed all these and received special lectures on Egypt's military, political, economic and social aspects. It was an intensive training with former ministerial faculty members and only one student. These were the reasons Joseph had to go to prison and stay in prison for a longer period. Even if he was not a criminal, he had to spend more time in prison to be ready for God's win without understanding the situation. After reinstation of the chief cupbearer, he spent two more years in prison. More preparation was needed for Joseph to be the prime minister of Egypt, the strongest country at that time. But also, like already seen in 40 Fars Out, it was a preparation for a channel of blessing through Joseph to Jacob's family and the people of Egypt and beyond that to all the people from all over the world. And now the God who is the subject takes Joseph out of prison in his own way. He gives Pharaoh the king of Egypt a dream for him to come out. It is not just being released from a prison but a rapid ascent from being a prisoner to the prime minister of Egypt. It is a symbol of Jesus Christ who will ascend from the grave to the right hand of God. Joseph becomes Egypt's prime minister. Just as God gave Joseph two dreams of the same content, God gives Pharaoh two dreams of same content. However, no Egyptian magicians and wise men are unable to interpret the dream for Pharaoh. Then Chief Cupbearer, who was reinstated to his position like Joseph's interpretation, introduces Joseph. And this time Joseph is really being called by the king. So he shaves his beard, changes his clothes and goes out to meet the Pharaoh. Then he interprets the dream that seems like two, but is actually one. But if Joseph only explained the king's dream, all he could do was leave the prison and live as a commoner in Egypt, or go to his father's house with anger towards his brother. But Joseph was able to say this because he learned while he was in prison. And now let Pharaoh look for our discerning and wise men and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of the famine that will come upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. Joseph did not just interpret the king's dreams but also suggested solutions to it. The proposal to reap a fifth of the grains during the years of abundance and store it in each city can only come out based on excellent political and economic knowledge. And upon hearing the explanation, the Pharaoh makes Joseph the prime minister. Through Joseph, not only Egypt but also the surrounding nation survive. At this time, Joseph was 30 years old and 13 years had passed since his brothers sold him to Egypt. Tracing the Bible now let's trace back Joseph's life. Joseph became the prime minister. The Pharaoh had a dream, but who mediates? It was the chief cupbearer who was reinstated to his position like Joseph's interpretation of his dream. So where did Joseph meet the chief? It was in prison. Why did Joseph go to prison? It is because of the false accusation of Potiphar's wife. How did Joseph meet Potiphar's wife? It was because Joseph was a slave in Potiphar's house. How did Joseph become a slave in Potiphar's house? It was because his brother sold Joseph to the Midian merchants and Potiphar bought Joseph from their hands. Why did Joseph's brothers sell Joseph? It was because they hated Joseph. Why did Joseph's brothers hate Joseph? It was because of Joseph's dream. Who gave him the dream? It was God. That's right. It is God's being that God started and is working on. There are also supporting actors and devices such as stage equipment that were used to make Joseph the prime minister of Egypt and become the channel of blessing to save not only the home of Jacob but also the people of Egypt and the world. There were good roles such as Jacob and Potiphar, the prison guards and the pharaoh of Egypt and there were villains such as the brothers who sold Joseph, the wife of Potiphar who conspired to seduce him and the chief cupbearer who had to forget Joseph after receiving his help. There are roles in our lives as well that are used to reveal God's vision. To Joseph's life, we must be able to see by faith the God behind all these people. 
Realization of the Brothers Joseph later realizes the work of God through the time that has passed for him to become the Prime Minister. And he acknowledges, accepts that his brothers, Forty-Fars wife and the chief cupbearer who forgot himself for a moment are not the subjects and only God is the subject and forgives them. However, Joseph doesn't just accept his brothers and instead test them. He sees how mature his brothers have become with Benjamin who grew up receiving hate and sorrow like Joseph. Joseph did. Eventually, as we have already seen in the process, Judas volunteers to sacrifice himself on behalf of Benjamin, and Joseph reveals himself, and this ends. In the process, the older brothers protested their oppression by saying, Why did God do this to us? But they know what they did, and we also know. They said to one another, Surely we are being punished because of our brother. We saw how distressed he was when he pleaded with us for his life, but we would not listen. That's why this distress has come on us. And finally, through Judah, they confess, How can we prove our innocence? God has uncovered your servant's guilt. This wasn't just a matter of the missing silver cup, but it was also a matter of their crime that they tried to bury. It is God who sent me here. Joseph says, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. But it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. This is a confession that God is the subject of everything that had happened. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. It is not the older brothers. God had done everything. Through Joseph's life, we must also recognize this in our lives. Stay in the land of Goshen. Joseph, who had already lived in Egypt for 22 years as a prisoner and as a prime minister, knows the splendor of Egypt. God told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob constantly that Egypt was not a place to stay. This is because Egypt is not a place to stay but is a starting place for an exodus. So from the beginning, Joseph tells his brothers to stay in the land of Goshen when they come to Egypt. It wasn't because Goshen was special, but it was for a life distinct from the prosperous life of Egypt. This distinction will continue to repeat in Canaan after the exodus. Joseph's Rest Time flies again and 17 years passes after the father Jacob stayed in the land of Egypt with Joseph and Jacob dies. And again time passes faster and 54 years passed after Jacob died. When Jacob died, Joseph was 56 years old and Joseph who is now dying is 110 years old. The Bible only mentions the blessings and death of Jacob in the 17 years Joseph who had power spent with Jacob in Egypt and is silent about the 54 years after Jacob's death. The Bible is showing that it is not written to show how much power Joseph had in Egypt and how he enjoyed the riches of Egypt. Joseph receives the vision of God, lives a life that fits that vision, fulfills his mission and enters rest, leaving behind a will saying that his bones should not be buried in Egypt but carried up from this place like Abraham, Isaac and Jacob did. Through his life, Joseph also proved that he was a foreigner on this earth. The story of God's zeal revealing how God's people should live in this world to Abraham with Isaac and Jacob with Joseph and now the story of the reappearance of God's zeal to a nation called Israel that begins with the 12 sons of Jacob will continue.